Hey everyone, this is Finn again, and we're gonna talk about how to check uh, linearization of your plates. So you might get a camera that is unknown, or a new camera comes out and you're not sure if you're transformed from the camera recorded log space to uh, linear XRs that you want for compositing and CG, obviously, uh, are actually linear. And you might think like, oh yeah, it's just the program, I have to trust it. But no, you don't. You can actually check for linearization. So the basis for this is, or the theory is, that if we record with the camera uh, just a plate, a gray patch, I'm using a color chart here, but you get the point, uh, like a gray thing with constant lighting and we change the exposure of the camera to go down and up in full stop increments, then that would or should translate to doubling or halving of the linear linear light values. So in this case, what I've done is I've shot a, shot a test chart here and I've started at uh, 125th of a second at 1.8. And this is N-Lock, by the way, Nikon N-Lock. Um, shot on the Nikon Z6 and 10-bit, whatever, I recorded it's DPX. Uh, so 125th of a second and then the next shot is uh, 150th. 100, 1 200, 1 400, 1 800, 1 1600, uh, and so on, and 1 64,000, uh, 6400. So each frame is one stop increment. So now you think, like, okay, let's just use uh, the normal sort of approach and, and resolve for this. So we go uh, with this node here, which is a color space transform that goes from NLOG and REC 2020, which NLOG is according to Nikon, at least. Uh, and then output color space, we're gonna go ACES and linear. Um, and then the second node, we're gonna add the chromatic adaptation because as we know, or as I explained in the previous tutorial, uh, when you use a color space transform and you're going to ACES, it doesn't adjust the white point, it only adjusts the gamma uh, or the color space, but not the white, like the, the chromatic adaptation. So you might think like, okay, this is linear and, and it does look linear. Like you go through all the frames and you say like, yes, if you know linear frames, like, you know, okay, that makes sense. You know, you can you can do the, the good old checking, just put an ACES transform in the end and just go to sRGB. And then you see like, okay, yeah, that, that sort of makes sense. I mean, I don't, I don't know about this stuff. Like that is weird already, but sure this, still looks kind of fine this looks just a bit too hot if you look at the if you look at the lin uh, little lock data again there's still some stuff in there so why is it so crazy weird and okay that's the first indication that there's something wrong right in this case there actually is something wrong but uh, this, is, this is a great candidate to show you um so if we use uh another method to transform it to linear which is uh, using a DCTL. So DCTL is basically like a Da Vinci CTL. It's basically a more accurate LUT that can do a lot more. So you can basically write your own plugins in DCTL and like get basically the same options as, you know, here and you can use DCTL of X and you have all kinds of stuff. Really, really cool stuff, uh, DCTL. And there's a tool called uh, Asus IDT DCTL.tcolorscience.com amazing tool and you basically choose your input input color space so in our case that would be uh rec 2020 and then and the cool thing is it also supports all the weird uh, dji stuff here so that's pretty cool and the fuji and whatever so rec 2020 and you go to uh unlock and then cae Cato 2 that's the uh, chromatic ad adaptation some you like to use Bradford, some like to use CAE Cat. They, you know, it's not that big of a difference. And then there's the, um, uh, yeah, you you can like adjust the white balance manually and like add this to the DCTL. I know I would do that step in Nuke so you can actually reverse it, but it's there. Uh, and then you can go there. We'll just go to Asus AP0. And then this is just for like you can drop a DPX and then preview it whatever and then you actually see the inverse lock function here um and all the other stuff so then we can just go show dctl and this is basically the dctl code you can go into here and go you know how you can take a look at it and th those values right here if you look at the white paper from nikon and lock 
it actually matches that exactly. So it makes sense, right? They just took the values that the that the camera manufacturer gave them and made this tool. So that's I think how it's supposed to go. Uh, at, you know, as long as the, the provided data from the camera manufacturer is correct. So then we're gonna do build DCTL and then it just downloads the DCTL and then you just drop it into your LUTs folder. And in your LUTs folder, you're gonna find the IDT uh, Rec 2020 Nlog Nikon Asus DCTL, right? And you can use that as a regular LUT, which I've done here. And as you can see already, this seems to way, make way more sense if you put on an sRGB view transform. So that looks way better. And yeah, that makes sense. But you, you're still, like, I still can't really tell if the exposure was correct. And I'm sure there's probably a way in, in, in Resolve to like, get certain get certain values here, but it's like, it's not made to be like an image analyzing tool. So I'll turn this off. And so I'm, what I did is I exported uh, the DCTL transform to ACES and the resolve color space transform to ACES. And as you can see, they don't, they don't match at all. So horrible. I don't know what resolve is doing here. Um, and then we're gonna open Nuke and you can, you know, for everybody that hasn't used Nuke before, you can get the free learner edition, which is perfectly enough to check those things. And then we're gonna go and I'm just gonna load in the two files that I made. So, um, uh, we get the DCTL transformed and the color space transformed version. Uh, I need to like update the cache, I guess. Sure, let's just turn that off. Okay, and then we got our files right here. And then, you know, how, how do we analyze this now? The first thing we do is we set it to raw data. This is just to bypass all of the new color space, uh, color management right here. Um, I've, set, I've set this to ACES on default through environment variable, so don't worry about it. We'll just set the, this all to raw because it doesn't, it doesn't matter. You can just, if you want to see something, you know, that you can just do this. It doesn't matter. It doesn't have to look pretty. It just has to show us the raw data. Then we're going to use a tool called the curve tool. The curve tool is basically a measurement tool that can do a bunch more. Uh, and we're going to just take this nice and gray patch that isn't blown out in the brightest version. Uh, yeah. I mean, it's not, you know, you're going to deal with noise. So let's let's take a bit of a bigger, bigger chunk here. So that gets equalized out. Let's have a look. Okay, that might go too dark. Oh, no, we have this. That should be still enough values in there. Cool. Then the next thing I'm going to do just to make it more pretty, because for some reason my tripod was sagging. That's a fun one. Uh, I think I'm just going to set this to sRGB so I don't completely lose it. Um, I'm going to do a quick tracker. Set this to... Uh, let's go adjust for luminance changes. Uh, we'll spawn a new tracker and we'll just track whatever this thing over here. Just to stabilize it because the tripod was sagging. Get a better tripod, then you don't have to do that, obviously. Cool, and uh, we're just gonna go dirty, stabilize one point. Uh, we're gonna set it to like the middle frame, so 1005. Okay, cool. So now we have this uh, sort of stabilized and we see what it does. And this, uh, yeah. And then we can apply the tracker to here as well. And then we'll use the curve tool to analyze actually our patch. So this is the patch we can analyze. If we play it back, you see this. You can already just press control and shift to get a bounding box here to just measure stuff on the fly. So if we just take a look at the values, the first value is like eight. Let's just call it eight. You know, there's always some, it wasn't white balanced properly. So you always have to sort of guesstimate. It's still a camera. It's not a, you know, it's, it's not a spectral measurement device, but so we're at around eight. So I expect that one stop less should be the value four. And we go here and that's, yeah, that's about four. So that makes sense. And then the next one should be two. And that's about two. And then we go further and we go to one and then 0 0.5, 0 0.25, 0 0.125, it's like almost exact 0 0.05 and so on. All right, so we see, we can already tell that this is proper linear. Now let's look at the other one, you know, j j just with this method again. And we, we see the first thing and the first thing, uh, the first frame is now 22 while the other transform was eight, so something needs to be off. So I expect this, you know, one stop less to be 10, around 10, 11 maybe. And we end up at 
It's not good. Doesn't look good for the Da Vinci transform. And then we end up at 2.5, and then at 1. Point, okay, I mean... Yeah, in the end it gets better though. 0 0.4, 0 0.17, 0 0.6, uh, 0 0.06, 0 0.02. So yeah, kinda, kinda. It gets better when it gets darker, but in the in the top end it just goes completely out of whack. So let's have a look with our curve tool, right? We want to reuse the curve tool, and we're gonna go for average intensities. And usually that measures the intensity between frames and stuff, but we're just gonna turn it off to zero frames. That's the uh, number of frames base average, and then we're just gonna press go, all the frames. It's gonna analyze them really quick. Uh, we're gonna copy paste this node and connect it to our other transform and do the same thing with the same exact patch, and we use the same tracker to stabilize it. And yeah, I mean, this is, wow. This is not good. Not good resolve, very, very bad. And now what we can do is we can take a look at the intensity data. So this will basically be, you know, what we've seen with, with our manual patch. But now, because we have it in here, we can go to the curve editor. Once we select both of them, so we want to select the intensity data. We can go to the curve tool and we get all kinds of weird curves. And uh, let's just have a look. We have intensity data for the uh, RGB data. So as you can see, my white balance wasn't very correct. Um, should have probably white balanced it, but nevertheless. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna use the blue channel for both. And take a look, or yeah, the red channel for this one, just so we can separate them better. They're, you know, they're pretty. The curves are, as you can see, the curves are like the same. So that's what that that's what matters, right? Um, now if we look at take a look at this one, this is the one that the DCTL gave us, and as you can see, it's a perfect nice log logarithmic curve. That's what we expect. Every frame is one stop, so it's half the value, half the value, half the value, and so on. Cool. That's exactly what we expect. And if we look at the one from Resolve, we get, end up with this. Uh, yeah, so that's, that doesn't really that doesn't really work that well. Cool. So keeping that in mind, that is basically how you can quickly, quick and dirty, like even on set. Just do this with a with a with a with a cinema camera. Even um, if you have calibrated lenses, you can of course use full stop increments on the lens, or even half stop if you want to go more accurate. Uh, just make sure you lock everything on set, like what is what. Um, you know, if you use like an Alexa, you can you can pretty much just skip this because you know what it does. You know it's linear. But if you have like a DJI camera or GoPro or wherever you have it. You could, you could, if you take like proper measurements with this, you could even rebuild some kind of linearization lot from it, um, because you have the data about what it does. So, yeah, that's basically the quick way of checking if something is linear. Um, it's really useful just to sanity check your transforms. Um, yeah, like even if you have an iPhone or something, you could do that just to check what it does and, and, and how it responds to lighting changes. And you could, like if, if, if I drop in the original log footage and do the same thing with it, like I go here, I go, um, I got this, uh, there I go. and then I got the end log to linear, made something raw recording, here we go. So if you have the raw recording right here, this is the lock. We're also going to change that to raw data. So we see the raw data and we're going to just change this to raw as well. So if you take a look at this, um, and I've burned it the, uh, the things here. So it's better to see what, what is what. If you do the same thing and just apply the whole stack to here, go blah, 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 average intensities, go. Turn off this one, go intensity data, and you go to curve tool. And you plot the... You can actually see the curve of the recorded log. Now it's not it's not the full range of the log that it can do because this was the brightest I could go. I would need more light um, because I, I kept the ISO at 800 because uh, it's the native ISO and and like I don't know I don't trust the consumer Nikon's too. Like if I double the ISO, that I will get double the exposure that that is correct because usually they put in some curve and it's 
it's not like I'm not even sure if this camera has an analog gain that I would even be able to to change anything. Uh, usually, new cameras just have one ISO or you know the dual ISO cameras have two, and then you know you just do it like what it does is a digital multiply, as we do in Nuke. And another quick way, if you if you only have like another quick way to just to just see this as well. Uh, it's also really interesting and really, really cool, is you can put up a great note and frame hold. Oh, and a frame hold. And we're just going to hold the first frame. Make sure it's not, not completely blown out, but it has values here. And then we're going to use a great note and we're going to multiply and keyframe it. And we're just going to multiply this by... Uh, half and then the next frame we're gonna go one fourth and then the next one we're gonna go one eighth and yeah you you could you could you know put a keyframe in the end and it would linearly uh, uh one sixteenth uh, one thirty two one sixty four one 28th, yeah, something like that. And now this thing, right, should match our linear raw almost perfectly. Like, I mean, to an extent, right? Again, it's not, cameras aren't perfect. But what we can do is we can put up a merge, and I actually want to do this after the tracker. We can put up a merge, merge our grade output so the Keyframed, uh, animated. Oh, I did a boo boo. Huh. There we go. Just need to shift this a bit. Yeah, 0 0.5, 0 0.25, 0. Yeah, okay. And then this one would be. I'll put in here 128. 265. Oh, that should work. Oh, I got it correct now. But you can then put them to different. And then you can actually see the the difference between the linear files that you got, or the linear files, and the um, what Nuke does when you just multiply it, which is the same math, right? One stop is double the exposure, or half, whatever. One stop down is half the exposure, or half the linear value. So that's why we multiply by 0 0.5 here. Um, eh? Hold on, 1, 0 0.5, yeah, that makes sense, okay. And as you can see, the error is quite low, especially in that patch. There's some stuff happening here with the yellows and stuff. I'm not sure. Maybe maybe that's just the lighting. It's not a good lamp, so don't take it with a grain of salt. But you can see this is this is what I would call like okay. I would I would say this is pretty linear. Now, if you do the same thing to the um, the one that was transformed using the color space transform, and we'll match this right here. Uh, you can see how horrible that is, right? Like, wow. Like, that is just... That is just completely wrong. Oh, we have to use this one, of course. Yeah, that is just horrible. That is completely horrible. The difference between mathematic linear, linear grade versus what we expect is wrong. So, yeah, this is not linear. And uh, yeah, if we do it to the lock, obviously, we, we're not going to have any. It's just for fun. Uh, uh, hold on. Why is it? Why is it not doing anything I'm here? Okay. Oh, it's just too dark. Yeah, the difference is just <laughs> completely bonkers. I mean, it doesn't make any sense to do linear operations on, on lock footage. And that also shows you something, right? If you want to work in lock, don't, 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 you know, don't put it in as linear and then work on it or... Because I've seen people do all kinds of weird stuff like, oh yeah, this is from grading, so I'm gonna just choose log, uh, I'm just gonna choose linear, you know, like go in here, anyhow, whatever, you know, don't do that, use the proper color space, use ACES if you want to have correct stuff happening, and if you, you know, if you don't want to do a hundred of grade notes. So this is just a quick way, quick technical way of checking this. Um, there are better ways, and there's better ways to map cameras. But this gives you a right indication if something is horribly wrong. So 
Thanks for listening for my rant about this for 20 minutes. Uh, I kind of needed to get that off my chest because uh, I spent a lot, lot of time just capturing this and getting 10-bit analog output from this camera. So yeah, have a good one everyone and I uh, hope you're all staying safe at home and I hope you're not in Washington right now. And horrible. Have a good one.